All right, so. That's good. Hi, I am Nick D. Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. I really didn't, I thought this would be kind of a weak thing. No. You don't even need the screw in there. This is shaping up nicely. Pretty much the last thing I need to make out of PVC is just our top, which is just gonna pretty much hinge open like this. And to do that, to actually hinge it, instead of using a hinge or anything like that, I'm just going to use a larger diameter pipe that can slip over our half inch pipe and then build the top off of that. I think that'll work out all right. So I'm just gonna cut this to size first. A little less than 35 and a half. All right, so now this is a piece of three quarter inch pipe and I can actually slip it over a piece of half inch pipe. It's actually a very nice fit and rotates really well, but doesn't wobble around a whole lot. So it should be able to make a really nice solid hinge for this top door. Now it might not seem that special putting a half inch pipe into a three quarter inch pipe. Surely there'd be plenty of room, but if you're using standard PVC, your half inch pipe is not going to fit into a three quarter inch pipe. You'd have to go up to a one inch pipe and then there'd be a lot of play. The reason it's working here is because pretty much in every size PVC, there's two different variations. There's a thin wall and a thick wall. Now I don't know a whole lot about the proper usage or even the proper terminology. I think it's something like schedule 40 and schedule 80. I'm definitely not your authority on the technical aspects of PVC pipe. But I can tell you the thin wall means that it is not nearly as strong, so it's going to bow quite a bit more. And actually, even though it's thinner and there's less material, it's harder to cut through with the hand cutters because it has a tendency to squeeze instead of cut through. Also, if you're gonna be spanning any significant distance with PVC, and if it's gonna be taking any kind of load, you'll probably wanna go with the thicker wall stuff simply because it won't bow as much and it's strong. So, that's good. And I'm just gonna throw some end caps on there, like that, just to make it look better. Oh, and a cool little thing with the end caps, if you take an outside end cap and an inside end cap, you can make a cool little waterproof capsule to put, I don't know, a tiny note or some pills or and any other small thing you want to keep safe. Although just using the standard, you know, press fit style, um, you can push a little too hard and then they'll be pretty difficult to get apart. 
So another option would be the threaded outside cap and the threaded inside cap. That way you can screw it together and have your little self a capsule. That is quite a bit easier to get apart. Anyway, I thought that was a neat little thing. But we'll put this in there. Around 19. I kind of got stumped on basically this top. Um, you know, I've been running, trying to figure out how I'm going to connect this pipe to the top hinge bar. Made this crazy 90 piece. I got out the heat gun to try and put it on here so it overlaps the side. I don't like it. It's ugly for once I'm I'm concerned with form. I realized what I want is it to follow this line. So what I actually need to do is bring these two in line. I need another 45 here. And then what I'm going to do is take a bar. So basically our hinge is going to be double barred. And I'm going to glue it at these three coupler points. So then it'll rotate like this. So I'm getting this little, you know, two inch strip straight edge and then it follows down the curve. He's just done there, buddy. It's a hot, wet, thundery night. Hopefully, uh, water doesn't affect this stuff too much. So find out. Oh right, that's the broken one. So it actually looks lined up pretty good. Not at all elegant, but we're getting it done. Okay, well this came out okay. Those are pretty well attached now. So we can slip this back on. So I can take cut this down, make one more of those. I can use this piece to make this just a little longer. All right, check this out. Okay, that's cool. Um, right. So it can't go back all the way. It'd be nice if it could go back further, but. That's fine, you'll just reach into it and take what you want and close it. All right, so I think that is the construction of the structure done. And now I just wanna color code everything really quick. I guess those should be the same, so these can be red. Oh, I did Okay, those are Okay, that should be, okay, they'll be light green. And I think that's all of them. Okay, so this next part is kind of cool. Um, the uh, plan is to basically make a skin on this with a tarp. So basically turning it into you know, a little semi-water resistant box that can all be torn apart and disassembled into a relatively small package. And the idea to make the tarp removable is to just put a bunch of snaps on it so the tarp piece is will pull off and just snap back on. Um, so originally I thought I could just like rivet some snaps onto the PVC pipe, but no, they make snaps attached to a screw, which, uh, which yeah, of course they do. So that's really cool. I guess these are used a lot in like boats and stuff for you attach it around the rim of the boat to put like tarps and covers and stuff on there. So I saw a lot of um, marine based stuff when I was looking for these, but yeah. 
So a snap with a screw, and then you have the uh, top portion that you just use a setter like normal. So I'll put in a bunch of these on our thing, and then I'll I'll try and cut out the tarp to fit this thing, and probably sew around the edge if my sewing machine's up for it. So that's the only part that's not going to be that fun. But if it works, it'll be really cool. And that'll take forever. Oh, I don't think I have enough. I thought there were like 75 in here. Maybe 75 pieces altogether. 75 pieces. Ooh, that's tricky. Four, 25. 75 pieces, not 75 actual snaps. That's tricky wording. 25 snap tops and 25 snap bottoms. 75. More math. Tricky math. That's annoying. But 25 should be enough. I'll just be sparing before I put these in. How am I, how am I actually gonna? Like the top cover is gonna do most of the work keeping it dry. Yeah, a piece that a piece that covers like like snaps and then they can just kind of flop down to the ground or and then comes up on the back and then one on the top. Okay, 25 very strategically placed limited edition screw snaps. I'd love to have more, but I don't have more. I can put more on some other day. Oh, hey. Wonder how that'll work once there's a tarp on there. The snaps are now acting like a, uh, a hold because they're kind of stretching over the snaps and holding itself up. How do you like how that worked out? I was kind of annoyed that it wouldn't stay up and it uh, it solved its own issue. Gotta love when a project knows what's best for it. So it'll just like these snaps, maybe having less snaps is gonna save me some work. I'm stalling, I don't wanna figure out how to put the tarp on here. Come on, buddy. All right, well, that was tedious. I basically made, well, I made uh, tarp bias tape. The uh, bias tape, it's edge banding in the fabric world. Um, normally it's, uh, it's basically just a strip of fabric that's folded in half. And I had my iron set just low enough to melt the tarp so it holds a crease. Which is cool about working with tarp because it holds the crease really well because it's melting it. And then sometimes it's folded on the edges again, so that's like three-fold bias tape. There's single-fold bias tape, tri-fold bias tape. And you just use it to make the edge of your material, one, look nicer, and two, it just prevents it from fraying. So we just take the strip, slip it over, and then we'll just sew it along the edge. So it's a really simple way to finish off sewing projects or tarp projects. But that came out good enough, so I'm gonna hope my sewing machine is up to the task of sewing this on. And then I'll cut out the top part and probably have to make more bias tape. When in doubt, 40. Since I'm working with a tarp, I'm not worried about it getting all over my fabric. Right, yeah, I think there was just a bunch of buildup of serdidimus or something in there. You can get really fancy. Pull that edge. Now, of course, it is all oily, so my feet aren't grabbing that well. There's a claws or whatever they're called. Spiky things that go like this, and they move your material through the sewing machine. 
But the tarp is slippery, and they're slippery, so can't win. Just gotta pull it manually for the most part. You always wanna make sure you're tucking your material as deep into your bias tape as possible. And anyone who can work with ultra thin bias tape and not miss, they are a talented person. I always get the thickest stuff I can manage. And things were going so well. And everything seemed to be going so well. The sewing machine was working great. I stitched the bias tape perfectly. I didn't miss any edges. Except I stitched it onto the scrap piece that I cut it off in the first place. I just put it back on. This is my piece. Kit. That's fine. That's fine. I'll just cut and make some new bias tape. Stitch it on the appropriate piece. We'll cut off the piece for the top. I'll put bias tape on that. And we'll move on. Yay! So all my tarp pieces have been made and stitched. They came out really nice. This is actually when the project starts getting really fun for me, when the bulk of the hard stuff and the stuff that I wasn't sure was gonna work out has done and it's actually working. It's really easy to, or at least for me, to think yourself out of doing a project. If you start thinking about, well, I have to cut the tarp into just the right size pieces and then I have to deal with the edges and I have to get the sewing machine out and I have to do the sewing. It's so easy to just, ugh. So sometimes you really have to push past that. And once you start working, once you start getting into the flow, it can be really fun. And then once you're all done, you've created something sometimes really cool. Because earlier when I just had a full 10 by 8 sheet of tarp, like how am I going to get this into the right shape that I need to cover the thing I've made? How is that going to work? It's, and you just stop, sometimes you just stop thinking and just start doing. And the project will help you out a lot of times. No, it's the bottom piece. Otherwise, those can have a freak out because that is way too small. That is more appropriately sized. Here. And here. Now, when I punch the snap through, I think I'd like a bit of extra material than just the one thickness of tarp. So I'm gonna try making a bunch of circles that I'll glue on probably on both sides so it's three ply. And then I can punch my little hole and stick my sap through and I think that'll make the whole thing last quite a bit longer. But let's see how well the punch works. And where'd it go? Down there. These are good enough. I mean, they're pretty messy, but I just have a uh, label sheet, blank label sheet here. And I'm softening up the adhesive just by getting it dirty so it'll peel off easier. I'm just going to stick all these down and that will prevent them from flying away. This is a great trick for when using spray adhesives with small parts. You can just use like packing tape. It's great when you have to like it's also great for like spray painting uh, tiny pieces of wood, um, little things that would fly away with the pressure of the, the spray from the can. It's a good idea to remove the nozzle if you're going to try and clean it, otherwise you might push it down and spray it right into your eye. I just got some tweezers so I don't actually have to touch it. These are all ready for snaps. All right, figured I'd uh, just finish up outside. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go first and just poke holes 
marking all the spots where I need to put my snaps. And to do that, I'm just going to use a soldering iron and just melt a small hole. And that actually works really nice. I think this will work out pretty well because it's not like punching the hole out where it would eventually fray. Push the button in, set it in there. Snap on, take this little post. Get a few good wax, splinters out that post like a cartoon gun barrel. And then that's permanently on there. So it's just that easy. Yeah, that soldering iron made the absolute perfect size hole. All right, now the really fun part. We'll see if any of this actually works. Oh, that's supposed to snap up all the way up there. Shoot. And there, problem solved. And actually now it's nice and taut. Just cool. Whoa, holy cow. I'm off that much. Oh, this one's just like in the wrong place. So the top and bottom worked out great. Um, they're all snapped on the way they were supposed to. The side didn't work out quite right. My measurements were off or where I placed my dots, it probably shifted on me. Um, so, but I was able to get it on. It's, it still works, it's all, it's all together but I'll just have to fiddle with that some more. And I think I might try and actually merge the sides and the bottom into one piece. Um, maybe kind of sew them together so that you don't have to just kind of stuff the flap underneath, but it's just gonna be connected to that bottom piece. I think that'll be a little bit cleaner. And then probably do something either by sewing or with snaps to kind of like fold these flaps over. There we go, holds itself open, which is really nice. Pulled a fair amount of firewood, I think. I think that'll keep it pretty dry. All right, well, this is my portable PVC wood shelter. I think it came out okay. There's quite a bit I'd like to improve and fix and build upon, but it's a pretty solid foundation, a really great prototype. And I definitely think it'll come in handy this weekend. There's quite a bit of rain in the forecast, so this should at least keep our wood relatively dry, if not completely dry. And just an idea about how much rain we actually got. There's a little pond in the middle of the driveway. This is some footage from an upcoming Nick Yak, Camping Edition that's actually gonna feature quite a few of my recent projects showing them in action. But I wanted to show you some of the wood shelter right now so you could see how well it actually ended up working. Well, I see a fire. That looks pretty dry to me. So I'd say that's a pretty big success. So uh, overall, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with uh, with how it came out. My sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nikki Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for Darren. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Come on, nobody. Stop. Stop chewing on the PVC. It's not good. I know dogs love it, but you're not supposed to let them chew on PVC. It's friggin' plastic. There we go. No!
snap. 